Being with the uh, Chicago Bears for the past 12 years, it's been rather interesting. As a football team in the National Football League, we had an interesting coach by the name of Mike Dicka many years ago. Before every game, Mike Dicka used to pick somebody in the team, ask them to lead us in what he called a spirit of unity prayer, which was the Lord's Prayer. He asked all players of different faith if this was acceptable. They said yes. Well, in 1985, he looked at a rookie. His name was William Perry. This country dubbed him the refrigerator because of his size. Mike Dicka, the coach, looked at William and said, William, you're the man. You lead us in the Lord's Prayer. We take the field when I'm done talking. And so now he's walking back and forth, giving his little pregame talk. I am in the back of the room with our quarterback, Jim McMahon, kind of a crazy individual. He leans over to me. He whispers in my ear. He goes, John. He said, look at William. He doesn't know the Lord's Prayer, man. <laughs> I said, sure he does. He says, no. He's sweating. He's moving. He doesn't know it. I'm telling you, he doesn't know it. I looked at him, I said, Jim, he'll do fine. Just relax, he'll do fine. He leans over, he whispers, he goes, I'll bet you $20 he doesn't know the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> I can't believe him. So I finally, just to keep him quiet, said, all right, you're on. $20, he knows the Lord's Prayer. We are now betting on the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> we get done betting, Dicka gets done talking. He looks right at William Perry. He says, William, you're the man. Lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Everybody bows. It gets real quiet. And William prayed this prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. <laughs> the entire place burst into laughter. We were never more loose before a game. Of course, the meeting was over with, and Jim McMahon came up to me and handed me a $20 bill. He said, here, John, I didn't know he knew the Lord's Prayer, man. <laughs> Benton and Bowles did a study once. They asked people, what do you most admire in other people? Top three categories came out to be warmth, honesty, and the sense of humor. Are you warm and approachable? You better be in what you do. Is there honesty and integrity about you as a person? Alexander Pope said an honest person is the noblest work of God. And the sense of humor, can you laugh at yourself? I'm in Spokane, Washington. You talk about celebrating life. I just got done finished speaking. I had five hours before my plane's going to take off. I hate waiting around airports, especially for five hours. I did notice, flying into Spokane, there was a golf course close by to the airport. I love golf. And what a perfect way to spend four or five hours. I said, why not do something different? Why not do it? I, so I went to the golf course. Didn't even have my clubs, but took my coat off, teed it up, rented clubs, ready to go. All by myself, just enough time to make it. Running to the first tee. As before I tee it off, is an old man. Later on, I find out he's 85 years old. He comes the first day, he goes, say, can I, can I play with you? Can I, I'm by myself too. And my first reaction is, oh, no, to myself. If I say yes, I'm going to miss my flight. If I say no, I show disrespect. So I gave him one of these. Sure, no problem. And you know how we love to label people. We do this. We label people. We label age. We label gender. We label kids. We label markets. We label race. We label culture. And when we label, I believe we disable every time. Labeling to me is disabling. This is an old man going to slow me down. 
He's 85. He's a type A personality. How many type A personalities do you ever see to live to be 80? They don't live that long, so slow down. He walked faster than I did. He hit the ball straighter than I did. And he was pure joy to be around. He finds out I'm a speaker on the very first hole. He decides he's going to give me a quote <laughs> for every hole. First hole, he goes, John, Mark Twain. I said, yes. He said, Mark Twain said, age is a matter of mind. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. <laughs> hit the ball, John, hit the ball. Second hole, I begin to tee it up. He goes, John, your face after 40 is your own fault. <laughs> you think about that one, some truth in that. I got a ball in the 14th fairway. I got an enormous pine tree in, in the distance in front of me, probably 50 yards. I can't cut the ball around it. I don't know whether I can hit the ball over the top. And I'm taking too much time. Ernie walks all the way across the fairway. Remember, he's 85. He's clapping. He's going, John, John, hit the ball. I haven't got all day. He says, I haven't got a whole lot of life yet. Hit the ball, would you? I said, I'm sorry, Ernie. I've never seen a tree that tall. I don't know whether to hit the ball with the tree or not. He said, let me give you a secret, son. He said, when I was your age, I could hit the ball over the tree. Hit the ball. Hit the ball. So I trusted him, and I pulled out the club. I think it was Warren Bendis once said, trust is the emotional glue that binds people together. I trusted him. We were binding. I took the swing, hit it perfectly, had no chance of going over this tree. It drilled the tree three-fourths away. The ball was bouncing back towards me. I turned and looked at him. He goes, well, you didn't let me finish. <laughs> he said, when I was your age, that tree was only about that big. Now I know, and I found out since, that's an old line people have told me. I had never heard that line before, and I laughed for two days every time I thought of it. But on the 18th tee box, Ernie gave me something that was one of those gems you hear from somebody that you never forget. It was by the writer Samuel Allman. And he once said this, he said, we do not grow old by simply living a number of years. We grow old when we lose our fun, our zest, our passion for life. For that, he says, that wrinkles the soul. John's messages on motivation and team building are credible, relevant, and on target with changes taking place in corporate America. Having met face-to-face -face with hundreds of successful CEOs and managers from top-performing companies for more than a decade, John understands today's high-pressure business environment. That's why John's comments on attitude, passion, and the need for spirit in the workplace ring true with leaders and employees alike.